Yeah. Well, I guess, so, you know, so I, I miss you and I needed to see you before Thanksgiving. That's what it was. I know. I know. Um, so, so I do have to answer your question. I do have some Thanksgiving plans with my family, but it's kind of weird. Cause like right now, most of the United States, is, most States are like spiking pretty high. Mm-hmm. So it's the same, the same thing happened last time in, and not to, I'm really sorry for anybody that was like, Ooh, Netflix recommendations. And I'm talking about <laughs> not fun stuff. Uh, but I promise I'll get to that. Um, but last time with both 4th of July and Labor Day, um, both of those holidays, most people were like, hey, maybe don't like have a huge celebration because oh, yeah. that would be pretty bad. And there was a there was a little bit of a spike. I think most people were under the agreement, like, we'll just watch fireworks from our own house. If we have people, we'll be socially distanced. And then Labor Day specifically in my state, uh, our governor was like, do whatever you want. Who cares? And then we had our highest like rise in cases. Um, so that's fun. And you're in the state of Texas. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're, okay. we're, uh, we're one of the like memed states because we, we have not handled this well. Um, mm-hmm. If it, if it was like a comp, it's us, Florida. I mean, California and New York just are heavily populated. They're not necessarily hand- handling it bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly Texas, Georgia, and Florida that are the silly states <laughs> when it comes to this. Well, I hope that um, you and your family stay safe during the holiday season and continue to stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. Well, I mean, we're gonna be like separated, I guess. Like, so we'll still have like a Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know. Th- things are different. It's okay. Um, if anybody's mm-hmm. listening to this, I'm sure they already know. Like. Times are weird and, you know, we'll get through it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, yes, like you said, we'll get through it. I mean, Indonesia, we had uh, also our big Idul Fitri back uh, a few months ago and people's desire to travel, be with their family members was so strong. And that was the hard challenge for many. I mean, around the world, that is the the hardest challenge. And um, so... Texas, now you've done it where you can go out and celebrate. Now you can decide for yourself whether you want to go out and celebrate for Thanksgiving with your loved ones or stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Which, uh, I don't know. When, when given the option, usually humans maybe don't do the best <laughs> thing for each other. Um, well, it's, but, a learning, yeah, no, it's I, a learning. It's a learning for all of us. This is, this is a hard ask, I think, uh, of of anyone to be able to be patient for months on end. It's months on end with no clear guide. Well, on how long for sure. Is. I I think, I think part of that comes down to, and again, I swear I'll talk about movies and TV. We'll get you all the good stuff here in a second. Yeah. But I think, I think part of the thing that specifically messed up uh, a lot of like perspective in the United States is they were like, okay, we'll do this for two weeks. And then like on that last part of the second week, they were like, eh, it's more or less going to be like a month, probably a month. And then it was like, okay, yeah, we, we can work with that. And then it was like a month was like coming to an end. And they were like, right. eh, three months? <laughs> <laughs> One year, so, two years, maybe. Yeah. So the, so the problem is we keep putting like everybody tries yeah. to put a date on this and we keep putting train tracks down as we're like slowly like trying to get a vaccine together. And it's like, hey, you, like like I said, so, some things kind of take time. Um, but is everything going well for you? Um, in Jakarta, yes. Uh, relatively speaking, we're, we're doing all right. Um, compared to our neighbors, uh, neighboring countries. They don't think we're doing as well, but um, you know the, the country is large. It has a huge population, so it's, a, it's got 100 and almost 270 million people. So yeah, and it's always a challenge to manage a large population like that. Um, we do we have lost too many healthcare workers, unfortunately. Um, so we'd like to not have more of that. And, um, yeah, for but, sure. Uh, so we're kind of in a semi-lockdown. So we're still um, number of 
uh, workers that are allowed to go back into the office are limited and uh, children are still being schooled from home. So there's still a combination of things. And there's still now talks of whether kids are going to go back to school in January. So that's part of the big um, discussion here in Indonesia. Um, we're basically, we, I sympathize with all the issues that you're facing over there because obviously it's the same issues that we're having over here. And, yeah. um, but since um, Hayden and I are such good people, we have come up with suggestions on how to make the rest of the 2020 or the indefinite number of days that are coming up entertained because um, as you may remember, Hayden is a, a this is a returning guest to the Janda Bachanda podcast. Of course, thank yes. you again. <laughs> he is welcome to come back anytime. He can take over my show if he'd like to. I, I, I no, I, never. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I, I I'm happy. I'm happy to have him anytime. And so you have too much of a spark that I lack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I doubt that. Um, and I love um, for podcast listeners. Hayden is wearing a tank top with Captain America. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. So Captain America from Texas. So this is about as America as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> this is and Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, Hayden's specialty, um, special skills, as um, Liam Neeson calls it, is that he is um, a sharp critique of film. So that's why he is the host of the podcast, All That Film. Please make sure that you show him some love and follow him um, on YouTube as well as Spotify. Leave a glowing review on Apple Podcasts. The same for Danda Bachanda Podcast. Our only requirement is that it be a positive review, not some mean negative review, please. If, but if you do have some kind of opinion but, about how we can improve, we'd love to hear that, actually. We'd love... Or... If, if you hate my tank top uh, and want to let <laughs> Janet Pachanda know about yeah. that, just five star it and then we'll know. <laughs> just five star it and we'll know. Actually, yeah. speaking of um, uh, wardrobe choices, uh, I'm wearing the Janet Pachanda t shirt. Merchandise um, items are available. Um, I'm sending one over I'm to. Trying to get, I'm trying to get my own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the black version with a white font over to. Uh, Text us sometime soon. So if you'd like yeah. to have one delivered to your home, please let me know. So now yeah, that I'd done, love to. I'd love to rock that on Casual Friday. Uh, yes, I love it. <laughs> and when you are uh, wearing it in Texas, please do send me pictures because that'd be cool. Um, yeah, so, for sure. So now that we've gotten all that um, business out of the way, and again, remember glowing recommendations, and the requirement is that you use big words like magnificent podcast you know <laughs> remarkable entertainment you know yeah, yeah. iconic Excellent. hosts this is these are the kinds of reviews otherworldly <laughs> a monolith of a personality i mean you really gotta gotta look at your encyclopedia here to... that's right this is your yeah. moment this is your moment to shine use your big words on the reviews for the all that film podcast as well as the other and so you may ask, what do we have in store this time? Last time we talked about all uh, the top 10 um, Janda films, but this time we're talking about the binge-worthy shows and or the noteworthy shows, really. And some of that we'd like to talk about uh, our recommendations for series that we're watching or we'd like you to watch. And the other uh, is... Uh, the, Hayden had a recommendation that Janda Batanda should have a mini series on Netflix because yeah, we you guys missed it because we didn't have the recording, so now we just have it between us two. Um, so or so. yeah, so what happened was <laughs> we're we're podcasters that forgot to hit record essentially, or we hit record but it didn't record. And we were. And, and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'll say it. I, I know we were all thinking it. It was our best episode ever. I think it was the best <laughs> podcast ever that we we lost. It, I don't it know happened. where it went. You know, the funny thing is we actually have the video footage of us 
talking, <laughs> no sound. So well, and, and you have. I think you have your audio. So <laughs> that's right. I have my audio. You could, just, you could post the conversation by yourself, and maybe people could try to read my lips. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she goes talking to herself again. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's about right. That's about that's about sizes up. Um, so yeah, so Hayden was making a recommendation that I think the next move for 2021 or 2022 is that Janda Batanda should have its own mini series on Netflix. Um, so it's time. It's time. I think we've already, I mean, we've already put it out in the world last episode that didn't come out. So, I mean, Netflix is going to call us soon. That's how this works. <laughs> so we're just waiting. Of- Speaking of um, uh, original shows, um, yeah, man, I, I love original shows, not just on Netflix, but in, in every, anywhere else. Like one of the ones that recently I've, I've just been sort of enthralled. I, I don't know if I, I, I'm going to see if I can send you the link. There's in Indonesia, we have Mola TV. That's uh, our version of like ESPN meets Netflix. And, oh, really? Yeah. And it's kind of cool. So on that, they have uh, this program called Musafir Malam. Uh, I guess that's best translated as like the nighttime poet. And it has, um, the host is our Indonesia's own rapper, Iwak, Iwake. And he interviews people, but he does it outside, outdoors, and or in iconic locations in the city. For sure. And, and it, it's cool, it's hip, and it's fresh, you know. And I love it. I love when people come up with new ideas to uh, to present something that's that can be boring, but it, if it's done correctly, it can be amazing, you know. And it's a nice new show. So that's an example of something that's new and noteworthy. And um, yeah, and, and I actually it's, I actually it's an really encouragement like for you point. to speak Indonesian. So because Musafir Malam is bilingual Indonesian English. So but um, kind of like this show. And uh, but it's kind of an encouragement for you to start sp- speaking Indonesian so that you can catch it. So I can <laughs> catch up with it. Yeah, no, I, I like I like what you were saying about sports is I, I think one of the problems with like sports movies or even like sports documentaries is they're really kind of only made for like people who really enjoy sports. Uh, And from what I can tell uh, from what people have told me about the last dance documentary, um, Uh you don't really have to, you don't really have to love basketball to still be like, Oh, this is a really cool documentary. I still haven't watched it because I don't know if you're aware of this. So everywhere, everywhere else in the world, it was posted on uh, Netflix episodically Mm -hmm. here in the States. It was not, it was Mm -hmm. posted on ESPN plus and I refuse to get another streaming service, um, so I do I hadn't watched you it. You don't you don't get less dance on Netflix. No, uh, we have we have different ne- like what we're allowed to like watch. So, for instance, uh, an, another one specifically, certain movies like I think Uncut Gems and Annihilation, uh, those were in theaters for about two months, uh, like after the first couple weeks. Those were in theaters for us. Those were on Netflix for basically everyone else, uh, right. besides I think the United States and maybe like the UK. I want to say. Okay. Um, All right. So, yeah. unfortunately, Hayden hasn't seen Last Dance, which I have. Last Dance for um, listeners out there, this is a must-watch. So this is about uh, basically Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls and Phil Jackson during their heyday, and and Scott Pitt. All, all the great, all the great stories, and so this is a I want to say a six episode or um, a five episode limited series. I believe it's six. Okay, so it, it may have been a six um, episode limited series, and it's so easy to binge watch, binge watch this because I don't know something about Michael Jordan. You just can't get enough of the guy. And you really just can't get enough of the guy. And I'm not a sports fan, but I love sports highlights. And I love films about sports because it gets me into the, the heart of the matter. Again, it's, a, it's highlighted 
um, episodes of years of history that you can just uh, watch in a in in a short while. And I I thought it was well done. Some people didn't like it because they thought the the filmmaking or the storytelling was a little bit cheesy. Was uh, some of the reviews, but I thought it was right on point for sort of the era. It kind of what it resonated sort of with what the '90s was like. I thought. Definitely, so, and, and one yeah. of the things I'd even throw out about that is I. I I saw a little bit of the promotional material and it definitely probably leans a little bit into the like Mm -hmm. campy and cheesy nature of like, Oh, we were the greatest basketball team ever. Like, but at the same time, I would rather have somewhat of personality than the the opposite of that where other sports documentaries are like, these are the events that happened. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, well you just, you just narrated the events. Like you didn't add the flair, the flavor to it. So there's so much yeah, drama. I'm, I, there was so much drama. I'm really in the last looking day. forward to watching it. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> it's it's on like my top priority. And another one, I you know, I I don't want to. I'm doth the movie person, and then the first two that I'm bringing up to you, I haven't seen. But one of these I'm catching up with because uh, everyone and their mother is talking about it. Uh, that you have seen, uh, the Queen's Gambit, which we talked yes. about last time. Yeah, I have watched. Part of episode one, uh, and I want to see more. My girlfriend's already finished it a while ago because um, I mentioned it to her. How I was like, dare hey, she watch you- before you? Oh, my God. Well, in, in fairness, she'll probably watch it the second time with me. And she's not <laughs> one of those people. Like, my brother is one of those people where he's like, hey, hey, make sure to really watch this scene. And I'm like, well, I know something's coming now. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom is queen of spoilers. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and no, no alerts. It's like, are you? And she would, she would, she would spoil no. the the spoils uh, early. Okay. My mom does so the same Queen's thing. Yeah. Gambit is a movie on Netflix, another limited series with uh, what's her name? The name of the actress that you uh, Anya Taylor Joy. So this is one of Hayden's favorite actresses to watch. Um, over, like, <laughs> I did ago. not say that last time. You she's so. she's one of my favorite. I. I think she's one of the best like up and coming actresses. And I think this being on Netflix and being mm-hmm. something that people are talking about will definitely like elevate her career to be somewhat someone like Emma Stone and Jennifer Lawrence both like had their moment where they, it, they were like the person, the actor. Um, so I definitely think she has a chance to be in that like discussion. That's, That's interesting comparison yeah. to Jennifer Lawrence and uh, Emma. Which which Emma did you just compare? Emma Stone. Emma, Emma Stone. Stone. <laughs> there's oh, okay. so there's so many to keep track of. Those now, those Emmas, so. those Emma actresses, <laughs> those Emma Hollywoods. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Queen's Gambit is definitely a must watch. Uh, cinematography is fantastic. Storytelling is fantastic. Casting is fantastic. Uh, I love the colors. Didn't you love the how how beautiful how it's filmed. It yeah, yeah. Film. yeah, it's amazing. Um, and also, wardrobe is, is incredible. Um, I found my 13 yeah, year old and, daughter and... brushing up, um, cleaning up her uh, old chess set. The Queen's exactly. Gambit is about um, a female <laughs> chess player, uh, a world class female chess player. And so, I, I think that's kind of a nice new thing to um, spark the interest in chess again. Chess is big in Indonesia. It's chess is, and and as I mentioned last time, I, I love me some chess. I've been, I haven't even got through the first episode, but I've been, I've been playing like on my break for work. Yeah. I'll like play a match with the computer, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll be up in the difficulty over and over. So maybe I'll get to that master level again. No, but I actually, I, th- I think like just as a quick like side about this too, I really like movies where it's kind of what is typically viewed as like Mm. a male dominated thing. I like when there's like a, a big female like led project. Mm. So for instance, if there was like a female engineer movie, I'd be really down with that because I know, I just think that like that as as silly as it sounds, that brings down some of the barriers where it's like, you can think of a a figure because no one really thinks of like a person engineer they're just like oh that's that's a dude i guess and there's tons of like great women in stem um so even like uh what was the movie um 
I'm trying to remember it was with uh, Octavius Spencer and uh, the one that the computers. Yeah, Taraja B. Henson. Um, you, that's this, correct. This is gonna bother me so much. So they, <laughs> they are they are what's called this is a, a a film about women who are mathematicians. So what they do is hidden math- figures. So that's why they compute. So they are actually computers because they do math all day. Hard hard math. Long division. Yeah. And not then your, they work for your, NASA. Baby <laughs> math. Not not your Facebook post. You put something in parentheses and there's a division sign and it's like, what's the oh, answer? Yeah. And everybody's arguing because it's nine or one. No, this is this is upper level math that you haven't even right. seen yet. <laughs> so this is now this is very interesting. So you have mentioned uh, Last Dance, which is good. Queen's Gambit, which is good. Um, they're great, actually. They're all actually excellent. And also no hidden figures. But- Stuff on Netflix for people to see. I mean, like one one that comes to mind recently, uh, the Enola Holmes movie with Millie Bobby Brown, yeah. I actually found really yeah. fun. Yeah. We're obsessed about Sherlock Holmes, aren't we? I mean, we can they can make <laughs> the Sherlock Holmes TV... So, okay, so who's your favorite um, Sherlock Holmes, On even though this is Enola Holmes, but who's your favorite Sherlock Holmes? Well, well does the Pink oh. Panther count? Does Clouseau count, Jock Clouseau, as a Sherlock Holmes? He's a detective, kind of loosely, kind of based on, I guess it's not really Sherlock Holmes. Wait, Who is my favorite Sherlock Holmes? You just jumped another series. You just went I know. from Sherlock Holmes I, to... Well, Pink Panther. Pink Panther. Pink Panther's similar enough. They're they're British and detectives. <laughs> no, I'm I'm asking like you know for you to. Oh, rank who's my favorite who's actor? Favorite for to play Sherlock. Oh, boy, let me look up all the. Is actors it Robert Downey? It. Is it Benedict Cumberbatch? I'm not big on Robert Downey Jr. I haven't seen Sherlock. I know. I know what you're gonna say. All that I know. I know all that film, some of that film for today. <laughs> oh my goodness. You have not even uh, seen the Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. I mean, it, look, I, I don't really like love any anybody like too much, but I like Henry Cavill as like a Sherlock Holmes. Uh, but I just think like I'm I'm one of those people where like I think Henry Cavill, like in most different like timelines of the world i think he should be like one of our biggest stars ever and now he's just on like the witcher and enola holmes and it's like this guy was superman like three years ago uh maybe yeah two years ago um so it's just weird because i i think he i i like his charisma um there's another movie uh uh, i'm trying to remember the name with uh it's guy Ritchie and army hammer and it's like a, a heist movie and it's based on this old TV man from uncle uh, man from is uncle. the name of it. Yeah. And I actually really like him in there. And I thought if I remember correctly that he was in talks to be bond just because he was in a semi spy movie. So people were like, Oh, he's British. He's mm-hmm. handsome. So if you're British and handsome, more than likely at some point you're going to be in the running for James Bond. Yeah. Um, so I was just, I, I, I was didn't know born that he was British. Country. I didn't know he, he is was... British, yeah. Oh, okay. So, hang on a sec. Henry Cavill in Enola Holmes, he was the brother, of course, of Enola Holmes. So he's Sherlock, he, and he plays Sherlock Holmes, which I yeah. thought he's a little bit too confident. There's there's a scathing, like, uh, self loathing about Sherlock Holmes, intelligent but brooding, which Henry Cavill. Cavill doesn't do. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so he's a little bit too... He's... Yeah. I don't think he's suited for that. He's... Uh, so he's so easy, is yours... He's easy to look at. Um, I I don't I don't hate that about him playing <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. But I don't <laughs> think that makes him the most suited um, Sherlock Holmes. And it's interesting that your point about him not being more of a megastar than he currently is, because is your point that being in The Witcher and in Nola Holmes beneath him? I No, I'm not saying beneath him. I just mean, like, it's just, it's interesting to see his career, like, 
I, I wouldn't. For, <laughs> I, I'm not saying plummet. I just mean Robert. I, look, I'll say it bluntly. Robert Downey Jr. isn't doing a Netflix original movie. He's not doing The Witcher or like anything like that because not yet. He's, not yet. he's, he's Iron Man. Man. He's Iron Man, so he's fine. Like because like the MCU was super popular and because yeah. the DCEU wasn't as popular, unfortunately. Um, Interesting. Because think... Superman story kind of was botched a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah. But again, that's yeah. a whole separate tangent. What is your favorite? Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I think Benedict Cumberbatch is pretty good. I think um, that's that's what I've heard. He's he's quite good. I mean, he has that um, that self loathing quite down pat, you know, <laughs> like you know about as erudite and as about acutely and intelligent as that as a man can be, but um, but with just that touch of self-loathing <laughs> yeah um, for sure which makes me think that harry cavill is not english enough actually because there's um, oh are you calling him out <laughs> um to, to hollywood i want to say you know. <laughs> um, um, but i i have another recommendation if if you want to to hear another one I, um give it to me all right so there's there's two of them. One I've already finished. One I'm actually starting. Uh, both of these are pretty popular, just to be clear. But if for whatever reason, like you've kind of been on the fence, uh, the Good Place is a very very bingeable show. Um, I me and my girlfriend watched it. But, like okay, my daughter my, oh, da- my daughter what? agrees with you. Well, your daughter is right. I wish <laughs> she was the host of this podcast. Um, <laughs> But I, I don't know. There's there's some really good things like uh, psychology, uh, just like studies of, of humans and who we are as people. Um, and it's kind of like sprinkled into this comedy that I was like, oh, this is awesome that this like they took The Office and they're like, what if we added this like pseudo like uh, afterlife scenario with it, too? So and it um, has all that. Um, it, that Hayden's correct. Everything is 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 there um, on that, and it has Ted Danson. So you know, it does. It does. It has He's Ted terrific. Danson. I mean, so yeah, you got to kind of watch it because you have to. You want to have. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the other one that I was going to mention um, is I am actually starting. I am one of I guess the only people maybe. Uh, I am going to start watching Shit's Creek with my girlfriend. Um, because I've uh, my mom has been we don't get that bugging here. me to watch it. Oh, really? What? I know, sad, huh? So it's one of those ones that I have to go on a, on a bad internet site to download. <laughs> the card launch. Um, it's not always a great thing. Okay, so yeah, speaking yeah. of um, sorry, one more Netflix uh, series that I'd like to ask you. I'm obsessed with my um, stand-up comedians and. Uh, Talk show host. That is crazy. That's what I was going to end on this with. Really? What are we going yes, to end yeah. on? Yeah. I, I, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, well, you, you have, you have your Letterman. I have three stand up comedians just in general specials that I was going to mention because I know people really, okay. maybe they need a laugh right now. They do. Tell me. <laughs> um, okay. So I was going to recommend John Mulaney. Uh, um, and, yeah. The best one probably is new in town. All of his specials are really great. They're worth checking out. Uh, you can listen to them if you want, but it's fun to see John Mulaney because he has really funny like mannerisms on stage. So Mike Rabiglia also has uh, My Girlfriend's Boyfriend, uh, which is one of my favorite comedy <laughs> specials ever. Now, now I will say- You just described some uh, people's marriages there. You know. I know, I know. Now, I, I will say it's a little bit more like- kind of storytelling so a, a little bit more serious but he's a really funny comedian and then the other i was going to mention because he was kind of uh in the news recently um what actually before that um just bo burnham's what if you like musical comedy he's a genius at that and he really perfected it uh mm-hmm. for both what and happy either of those but the last one uh do you know hassan minaj yes patriot yeah do 
Patriarch and his special Homecoming King. Dude, Home- Homecoming King amazing. was one of the best special. Yeah, amazing. he's amazing. He's, he's terrific. So brilliant. I mean, Hassan Minhaj is definitely a brilliant mind. I mean, he's very sharp and he's acutely aware and in tune. And I love his behind that, but the between the scenes or behind the scenes, I guess. Uh, also, that's now available on YouTube. And uh, yeah, Patriot Act for sure is a, a top show uh, to watch. Um, and I, I don't know if you on, saw. Depending on who you ask, though, because my mom can't stand him. But um, <laughs> I, I don't show. know if you saw the reason he was trending. Is because um, so he was he was hooked up to a lie detector test, uh-huh. and and he was. I don't think I legitimately think he wasn't expecting to be asked this question. Because uh, he said on, I think it was on Dak she- Shepard's podcast. Dak Shepard's an actor who is kind of like the yeah, next Ashton Kutcher's main star. Yeah, 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 and yeah, pod- yeah, yeah. He, and a podcast thing. Like yeah, yeah, he's coming for our the podcasting glory now. Um, and Kristen but, Bell's husband. Uh, so we've all we've come full circle. I always forget that. Um, <laughs> but uh, Hassan was asked. He's like, oh, like. You, you said on uh, Dak's podcast, like, uh, you would call it, like, what would you rate Dak out of 10? And he's like, oh, like, it, if I have to be honest, because he was hook, hooked up to a lie detector test, he was like 6.1. And then he went on this uh, tangent where he was like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, like, talk too long about this. But, like, the thing that, like, I, I'm very, like, envious of that the industry has created is people, like, Dak Shepard, who like are a little bit schlubby, like, like, yeah, uh, we don't have that for any people of color. It's either you have to be like ultra mega hot. And I forget the, okay. the Asian actor he brought up, but he he's like, yeah. Probably have you seen that man? Yani. <laughs> Well, that's, that's a good one recently to bring up, but mm-hmm. he was talking about this, uh, Asian actor and he's like, yeah, he's ripped and he, he flexed his muscles and he can hold a pencil, uh, like between his abs. So you either have to be that to be insanely hot or you're nothing. And, and he brought up, he's like, the only reason like I've made it is because I'm funny. Like people don't even think like I'm attractive and hot. Hassan Minaj is like a good looking dude. <laughs> and, and it's just one of those yeah. things that's like unfortunate. And, and I am, I am loving seeing like people bringing, bringing that up openly in that are working in Hollywood industries. Cause yeah. that's going to be like actual changes. Lulu Wang brought up, um, because I think Ron Howard was announced to do, I want to say it's uh, a Chinese biopic. And everyone was like, hey, uh, Ron Howard doesn't know anything about like right. being Chinese. And and I was like, you know, like Lulu Wang is like, yeah, you should bring that up. Like if, if that's important to you, don't like, we don't need to keep this hush hush anymore. Like this is a problem in Hollywood. I, I love like, Directors and our uh, actors, like just openly being about that, I guess. Well, yeah, and so that will bring um, about a new change, a new uh, wave of um, different, a new genre of filmmaking. Um, and it's not always needing to originate from Hollywood too, because I mean, you, want, you mentioned earlier about you know Studio Ghibli, you know, uh, it's a powerhouse um, uh, on its own, and you know, centered in its own universe, and it's very much not. Hollywood centered. So for sure. And then so more and more of that is um, going to uh, be the case moving forward, I think. Um, back to the segue of the Jenda Bajanda miniseries, Netflix original coming up soon. I'll say, I'll say this, uh, Hassan. <laughs> yeah. If you want to direct it, man, I we would love to have you. You're the no, you're the number one get. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Oh man, there's there's no not no other. It doesn't there's go. No one else. There's no one else. Yeah. Can you make us the homecoming king and queen the way that <laughs> can you write that for us? But um, yeah, that was brilliant. That was just absolutely brilliant. Um. So yeah, this has been fun, and uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we keep you guys entertained and in touch and and film is always a, a good way for, I think to connect everyone and it could be in Jakarta or it could be in Texas and we could be watching the same doesn't film. matter kind of unites us all Absolutely. really interesting yes. um 
I, w- I was going to mention just real quick, if, if you're on YouTube and you somehow got to this, this moment, uh, I'll be leaving. If there are any other recommendations, I'll leave a couple uh, down below, like in the comments. Uh, and if you're listening on the podcast, tell you what, if you are writing a review this week, include some stuff that, that you want to see us talk about next time. Cause I'm sure um, you can reach out to me like, and next time we do this, we can go through like a couple recommendations, whether it be movies animated things because we might do animation stuff right. uh next time but right. if tell you what actually specifically yeah. if you are if you are one of the mom games the hashtag janda moms out there um <laughs> let us know the the worst experience you've had uh with one of your kids uh watching a movie on repeat <laughs> that's right yes we want to see we want to hear your your horror yeah your horror film in that sense, yeah. Oh, what should we do? <laughs> should like, yeah, your your film on repeat. That's right. That's that's what it is. Film on repeat. Yeah. Okay. Your yeah. film terror. Yeah. Your film terror. We want to hear it. <laughs> um, brilliant idea. Good job, hey man. <laughs> all right. So we all love Hayden Lewis from all that film podcast, and we welcome him back anytime. Nice. So this is 2020. We'll see you again, hopefully, in 2021. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Texas and all around the world. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you.